Hello, my name is Yao Hongxie. I'm with the Department of Material Science and Engineering at UCLA. And the listed here are my collaborators. And the title of my talk today is Surface Plasmonic Sensors for Biomedical Applications with an emphasis on light biomedical matter interaction. Here is the outline of my talk. I'll first give a brief introduction to the physics of SIRS, Surface Enhanced Raman Spectroscopy. And that combined with machine learning enables us as a group, research group to venture into the biological world where engineering meets biology. And there we encounter a clinically relevant question, which is disease diagnostic accuracy and the critical role of machine learning. I'll provide a number of examples throughout our study or research, and I'll wrap up with a future outlook. First on Raman spectroscopy, I presume majority of, the, of you guys are actually familiar with what is Raman process. At the core is a form of interaction between photons and phonons. The key advantage of such interaction is that phonons have only allowed uh, wave number or energies. Therefore, by analyzing the spectrum of the scattered photons, we can uh, backtrack into what the material we're looking at. Now, combined with surface plasmonic, uh, surface plasma resonance, a uh, Raman signal can be amplified by orders of magnitude. Therefore, we call that surface enhanced. So it's SIRS. And uh, when SIRS platform is used for analyze biological entities, in this case, I show a cell with a nucleus and a plasmonically uh, active uh, metal surface. When the beam of laser light shining on this surface, surface plasma resonance is uh, excited. And that actually in turn re re result in a very strong source scattering or Raman scattering signal to be collected and analyzed. Now, there are a number of outstanding characteristics of SIRS, one of them being the single molecule sensitivity. And that is truly an amazing feature. We can get a fingerprint, spectral fingerprint from one single molecule. And uh, that really uh, gives the sensitivity to the technology. And how do we know is, uh, a, a whether a, a spectrum is from a single molecule. This is classically done through the study of a bi-analyte. And uh, there you can get a definitively uh, definitive signature or conclusion that whatever the spectrum you get is whether it's from a single molecule or is from more than one molecule. Now, second part is the highly specific nature of SIRS spectrum. Now to validate that, we, my group, conducted a study, examination of a kind of a peptide commonly present in human brain that we call that amyloid beta 42. And this presence of amyloid beta 42 is associated with plaque formation in our mind, especially in the minds, in the brains of the Alzheimer patients. So there my, my students conducted a 196 hours nonstop scan of the spectral features as shown in this PCA plot, principal component analysis plot on the lower right. And there with time, we can see each of the dots here, it represents one spectrum, one search spectrum. And with time, the search spectrum moves across the principal component phase space. And when we get to 196 hours, they pretty much actually after 24 hours, the spectral feature do not change much. And it's uh, all clustered and become tighter and tighter, more tightly distributed. Okay, 
And also SIRS is a technology that commonly uh, perceived as non-quantitative, mainly because SIRS is, happens at, uh, uh, is induced by uh, surface plasma resonance, which is highly dependent on the detailed nanometer scale metallic structures, which we don't have that precision of a control. Now to that end, my group invented a SIRS platform that with a layer of graphene coded on there. And there, uh, by looking at the graphene spectrum, the uh, G peak of graphene is directly related to the local intensity of the plasma resonance. Therefore, the, the single layer graphene serves as a built-in uh, 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 plasma resonance intensity gauge. With that gauge, we can um, uh, normalize all the uh, molecular spectrum or uh, signature uh, relative to that gauge, thereby enable us to have quantitative source measurement across many orders of magnitude. In other words, with a large dynamic range. Now, another, um, um, so um, the, um, after we get the third spectrum, the important thing is how do you analyze that? How do you tell its similarity or differences? There, we have to uh, uh, employ machine learning. And uh, the important message I want to say here is the picking and choosing of the specific machine learning algorithm is awfully important to the eventual accuracy of the bio, uh, uh, bio sensing result. And here we are using this particular combination of algorithm starting with uh, a hierarchical clustering analysis and associated labeling in analyzing exosomes from patient samples. And the machine learning then go through a neural network based, uh, a, a classifier uh, for uh, repeated cyclic uh, cross validation and training. And finally, uh, it goes through a blind test. And this kind of learning process typically rendering a learning accuracy versus learning epochs or the cycle. We run the machine uh, learning through and it shows, typically shows this behavior like shown in the green curve. In other words, uh, with the increasing number of epochs, the uh, uh, learning accuracy become higher and higher. However, upon cross validation as shown in the red curve, you can see that after a certain number of epochs, the actual accuracy no longer increase. And the distance between the green line and the red curve is known as oversampling. And that's something to be watched out for when you're doing machine uh, learning. Okay, so when an engineering and the technology platform like SIRS meets biology, the first lesson, at least our group have learned is how to handle variability. In engineering, we're not so used to a huge amount of very variability. As such, if we repeat a you know, physical science or engineering experiment, if you do it in a repeated fashion, the result will come out to be exactly the same. Whereas in biology, it's not exactly because nothing in biology is exactly the same. Everything has a huge variability behind it. Therefore, in order to get meaningful results, we have to have a very, uh, we have to be highly cognizant of the importance of statistics. Now, from an engineer perspective, we'll have to, I always have to come up with an explanation for myself as to why biology, or biological world is so highly variable, whereas engineering or physics world is highly, highly repeatable. Now, I think this is my tentative explanation I exchange with this audience, which is the key point is the bonding strength. Like in biology, there is a kind of bonding called hydrogen bond. I remind you that hydrogen bond is not like a hydrogen 
uh, atom and hydrogen atom bonding. It's a high so-called hydrogen bond is a, a form of weak bonding, very uh, uh, similar to Van der Waals bonding. And the bonding strength uh, could be orders of magnitude lower than that of a typical covalent bond, such as silicon-silicon bond. Okay, in that case, then everything is, um, you know, uh, the barrier of one configuration or another, it, it's very low at room temperature, uh, and therefore they change a lot. Now, uh, you ask, what's the importance of hydrogen bond? Well, hydrogen bond is of overriding importance in biology, because uh, just to mention a few, uh, DNA, the double helix, the two helix is bound together via hydrogen bond. And for RNA, as in the figure shown in the, the middle, all these black lines shows the uh, hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond is what hold the molecule in a shape. We call it conformation, right? For proteins, uh, as shown by the illustration on the right is the same. Hydrogen bond is what hold the shape and the shape ultimately determine the biological functions. That's why hydrogen bond is important. And uh, it, it's important, but have a very low uh, making and breaking the energy barrier for that. Therefore, the biological world is highly, highly variable. Now, having recognized all those, we want to show that still this uh, SIRS combined with machine learning, we call it SIM, uh, a SIRS identification of molecules. This is our platform. Uh, SIRS combined with machine learning still can be very, very useful in disease diagnostics. And this is a, on this slide, we show the first example from our group's research, which is biomolecule based. And in that case, we analyzed uh, 28 subjects of Alzheimer's disease, uh, uh, analyzed their cerebral spinal fluid. And uh, we uh, look at them and uh, using SIRS, and we have achieved a 94% accuracy in cross-validation using convolutional neural network. And the diagnostic outcome is, we don't have to, time to go into details, but this table basically shows that the diagnostic outcome is highly correlated with cognitive test outcomes. Um, and uh, in there, we then uh, perform the double blind test using five patient samples multiplied into 15 samples and we cluster them into groups and into these five groups. And we then after the unblinding, we found a hundred percent match of these uh, groups. And uh, this uh, 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 slide shows a, a sort of a superimposed spectral feature within each of the groups. And you can see the similarity within each group and the dissimilarity or differences in between groups. So that's a, um, uh, this one, it uh, uh, serves as the first feasibility demonstration of a biochemical based liquid biopsy for Alzheimer's disease. Now, the next example we're going to show is our application of SIM to disease diagnostics through exosome-based uh, analysis. Exosomes, as shown by this illustrative figure, are the part of individual cells' normal biogenesis. When cells uh, live, they actually routinely uh, secrete exosomes, which is a small particle on the order of 100 nanometer in size, but they carry important information. The biological field uh, people have increasingly recognized the value of exosomes. So in our case, we use SIM to analyze exosomes that we got from people's uh, uh, either separated from blood of patients or tissue or saliva. And uh, the challenge there is when you get these exosomes, they are naturally secreted by both healthy cells and disease cells. The challenge for us is to identify the ones that secreted out by disease cells, and we're using their biological signature to diagnose disease. Now, first of all, how do we know 
what we're looking at is exosomes. Here, these three images represents the two-dimensional scan of our uh, substrate. And if we see particle like this with a very small spatial extent in which both the protein signature, the protein peaks and the lipid peaks and the nucleic acid peaks, they coincide in space. That's a good indication that these are indeed exosomes. So when we use that to diagnose disease, we first, you know, in this uh, uh, diagram on the left, each of the green dot represents a spectrum from the healthy and each one uh, in the red represents a spectrum from the disease. And then the pink region represents the decision boundary for disease and the green represents that for healthy. And if a green dot fall onto the green background is the one positive identification of this spectrum come from a, a healthy patient. So with this kind of algorithm, we analyzed 15 gastric cancer patients and 15 healthy controls analyze the exosomes from their saliva. And what we have been able to obtain is a sensitivity and specificity in the biostatistical terms right, of 89% and 96%. And that shows that actually our clustering algorithm we use in machine learning is awfully important because without clustering, our actual sensitive specificity are only in the 50%. And we have an area under curve of the, uh, as we will show on the next slide, of 0.96, which is also a very respectable number. Now, uh, the, these curves, two curves shows the saliva-derived uh, uh, exosome and tissue-derived exosome. And this blue curve is the so-called receiver operating characteristics curve, commonly used in clinical diagnosis. And here we, we see uh, over 90% sensitivity and specificity in both kinds of exosomes in diagnosing uh, gastric cancer. Uh, disease. This is through cross-validation. And furthermore, our final example is the analysis of SARS-CoV-2. In this case, we use SIRS, uh, our SIM platform, to look at individual uh, variant, uh, individual virus particles. And we are trying to distinguish between SARS-CoV-2 and the very similar SARS-CoV-1 virus. And here we performed a blind test of five and five samples, five of each, and we have got nine out of 10 correctly. And uh, that leading to 85% and 84% sensitivity and specificity respectively. Okay, future outlook is that the bridging, we need to bridging the gap between the fingerprinting technology and traditional proteomic technology. We also need to op optimize the choice of machine learning and finally explore the clinical utility of SIM for increasingly large collection, collection of disease types. Now, here is the final acknowledgement. Our collaborators at UCLA Dental School, Professor David Wong, Yong Kim, and Feng Li, and our collaborators at Duke University, Professor Tony Huang and Zoe Wang. And this study uh, was funded in part by the USAID uh, and two NIH programs as shown here. Thank you.